Yeah, but if you were to tell us, I mean, I, I you know, hate to differentiate, but if you were to tell us, I mean, if you were to be looking at groups that have suffered losses and, you know, the, the places, the communities that have been most affected in Taraba, would you say that they were heavily populated by herdsmen or people who are affiliated to herdsmen? Because in many instances, we found out that, you know, the people who are actually, who are on the receiving end of this, uh, you know, crisis are not people who are directly involved in whatever conflict might have led to uh, the injury that is now being inflicted on them. You see, that's the reading some people want to read into the Taraba crisis or experience with the Fulani Hesman thing that oh, there, was, there is actually, in fact, somebody even talked about the fact that, you know, we're trying to raise or we've raised a militia to go clear out. Uh, 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 we'll we'll come to people. that shortly. Yeah. We'll, we'll come to that shortly because where that is also coming from, it's a pretty strong quarter. Uh, so it's a quarter that cannot be ignored as the case might be. But if you were to look at the, you know, people who have suffered the most in your state, what group of people would you say have suffered the well, most? Uh, every, the, the, the towns and villages that have been affected yes. clearly are people that have nothing, like you say, to do with you know, you know, owning cows or actually they're just farmers. Farmers are the worst hit because our population we have are got they more. Farmers? Farm no, no, no. They are farmers of you know, but mostly farmers are you know are of, of the other tribes in the state. You know, the tribes that constitute Taraba. Taraba is multi-ethnic in, in in nature, and they have suffered the most. Most of them are not on their farmland as I speak to you now. They've all vacated. They've all disappeared. In in a local government like Lao, you have three communities: Yandang uh, and Jinjo communities, where you don't have, even have people anymore. They've all moved away. They're in all sort of IDPs right now. So farming is affected. So if you're talking about the group that have suffered the most, farmers have suffered. And now, that's not to take away from the fact that in Sedona, for instance, uh, some other group were, you know, suffered some kind of uh, damages during the crisis. And that's in the nature of crisis. But to think that maybe just only one group, you know, can, can, can claim that, well, okay, uh, we're, we're, we're victimized here. It's wrong. In a crisis, you, you've got victims left, right, and centre. Mm -hmm. And even in the Sadona yeah, experience, and like the governor of the state keeps saying, it is not really about figures. You know, when people banter figures around, the figures of those who, are, who have died and everything, it's almost like as if they are competing. But and it, we're not, but we're, it, it we're not playing a, video no, game just, just a moment. It is also important. It was seen that sometimes, too, we also play with figures in Nigeria. People do not take uh, government sources of figures credible. You know, in many instances, you'll find out that we're not even clear on the number of people who actually lost their lives in an incident, uh, even in something as uh, as obvious as a car accident, you find f figures varying. In the gas explosion that happened in Lagos, uh, some people said 10 people died, some people said 2 people died. You have to ask, how difficult is it to reconcile and how come is it that, you know, we, it seems that we're not counting all the people that have died. So the figures are also important. In, in, in Saldana local government there, which you have mentioned, we heard that as many as 800 people lost their lives. Is that correct? Well, again, that is part of the narrative that is being read into the Tarawa situation, to say 800 people. And I want to tell you that that figure actually changed over time. You know, the, the, at the beginning of the crisis, there was one set of figure and the other. And the governor of the state keeps saying what is very important, that, look, all lives matter. You know, it doesn't really matter. The life of one person and the life of 800 people is the same thing. No life is be better than the other. So when you walk around with figures, and this is the problem, we're not dealing, when, people, when, there's, when, when people are affected and then the, you have death, we're not just talking about statistics, we're talking about real life situation, we're talking Very about true. grieving parents, we're talking about when a Fulani is, is, is grieving his, the death of his son, a young dark man who is also crying that, look, his mother is, is lost and everything, Very it true. all matters. Like you were, to, you were arguing yesterday, it's not, we, we must walk away from a situation where we are, you know, just talking about figures and numbers. All life matters, and that is the way this problem can be dealt with. I agree. But when you argue you. and when you fight Mr. and you Bello. say you want to compare but, but numbers. I think it's extremely important that we, if you notice, I have not put any tribe or ethnic group to the people who lost their lives in Sadauna. I'm not saying that they're less important or more important than people who lost their lives only recently in Lao, which we hear happened just in this new year. Uh, what happened, I mean, in Sadauna is also very despicable. I mean, there have been comments as to how that was, you know, not covered by the media. It was, uh, you know, it would seem that it was downplayed, perhaps because, you know, people did not know on time. It's also pretty in the interior. But how many people? You, you represent the state government. This, if nobody else would know, the state government should be able to account for the people who have died in its, in, within its domain 
from the state records how many people lost their lives in Sadawna? Again, that answer will come. But like I said, I said to you, there's a judicial panel that is really working in Taraba State over the Sadawna crisis. But, and especially for those of us who practice this thing, who report these stories, I think we should start giving Nigeria the sense that, look, while it is very important to count the bodies, also the, 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 the dead bodies, and while it's important to ban the figures, like you're saying, we should actually ask the question about no, the not human banding. life. I think it's very important to know that we're not banding. We are counting for the people who died. Every, if, every, if we say that every life is important, then we must be able to give an account of where everybody is. Is it that they are alive or they're dead or they're missing? I totally agree. Yes. But again, I say that for the person who is counting the bodies, I'm talking about one person who is dead. Now, everyone that is affected feels as if no other person is affected by this. And this is very profound that we know that, look, it's not a competition over how many people. You lost someone and lost someone. And for those who are in position of leadership, like say the governor of the state, for instance, it's not for him to, be, to, to really, to, he has to find a way not to only, you know, uh, 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 celebrate and dance around the number of people that, that are dead, because everyone belongs to him. Okay, now the let me, let, 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 the young man is let, dead, all let, belongs to let's him. Let's make this broader. Since this crisis began, how many people have lost their lives in Taraba? Well, it, it depends on what level of the crisis, at what point in the crisis. But we're talking of a crisis, you know, across all, uh, all decades and all times. Yeah, tell, tell and especially us. The I mean, there is this, you know, we know that there's been a recent upsurge. I mean, we know that farmers and herdsmen have been clashing in the past. In Benue, they will tell you that it, this, for them, started in 2011. This recent upsurge started in 2011. It was sporadic at first, that it became, looks like it became a little more systematic. In southern Kaduna, we know we have an idea. In Adamawa, we have an idea, even though they've also had to battle a bit of the uprising, the Boko Haram crisis, you know? So, in this recent time, this recent, you know, farmer herdsmen clashes that we've had in the last two years or so, um, you know, how recently would you say that Taraba began to notice that fracas, that conflict between farmers and herdsmen in recent times? Well, yeah, I, in, in recent times, go back as well as, because even in 2000, as far back as that, we've had those crises in Sadamna, as far back as, as to, uh, 2000. But recently, of course, there have been an upsurge, and we are not immune from what's happening. By, by recently, the, you mean? Just in the recent you know, few years uh, that we'll be having this crisis. 2011, uh, 2012? Uh, uh, about that. But for us in Taraba, it became really, really pronounced between last year and the year before. And as we, uh, That's you know, 2016 as we, uh, and yes, 2017. And even earlier. So we've seen an upsurge in that, which in, necessitated... In that the, time, yes. within 2016 and 2017, how many people have lost their lives in the crisis in Taraba? You know, I want to tell you, Mopi, that in Taraba, well, we have got you know, security agents who are really into the business of accounting for the bodies that are dead. I will tell you what concerns us and the government of Taraba State. We are more concerned about saving lives. Of course, we, are, we also understand the dimension of the problem. And figures are very important, like you say. But I tell you what is even more important. What is even more important is to focus on saving lives, which is what the government is doing, the governor is doing, by bringing the anti, you know, anti open grazing law to see that we save more lives. Because what, in, the end, in the end, of course, you are going to have figures. But that is little consolation for the victims, for the people that are affected by this. It's, go, it's going to be, it doesn't bring closure. Well, how would you bring know? Closure I, I'm is, wondering, how you didn't know the number of people who have been affected? If you're not taking into cognizance, how many? of them lost loved ones or how many of their lo loved ones were lost if you, if you get my point yeah I, I get your point i take it but i'm saying that one of the things we must walk away from is the issues of i i you see that you see the issue of figures and we play around with it especially we that are reporting take for instance the law crisis people will tell you that we've, we bury we had a, a, lo a, a bigger mass burial than even Benue State. Benue State is talking about 73 but in the Tarawa State will tell you that over 80 people lost Last low, low crisis, and that is massive. Of course, the media attention, you know, went to Benue State. But in Lao, over 80 people. I spoke to a friend yesterday who told me that between himself and a few friends, they buried over 56 people in an open grave. Mm. And then they, they found more dead bodies. I, figures are very important. Statistics that, that are, is extremely, solving a problem that's extremely is disturbing. what is more important.